Radio 4. Now it's 20 past 8. We present I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello, hello, and welcome to the 1980 Christmas edition of I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. And it's a very special edition this year because we have a new joke which will be told by one of the team members at some stage in the proceedings. But before we reach that, let's give a warm hello, thank you, and last orders, please, to our two teams. On my right, Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton. And on their right, Barry Cryer and Graham Garden. <laughs> and straight away, let's go over to our pianist, Colin Sell, for a seasonal note. Thank you, Colin. Now, <laughs> before we do round one, teams, you'll see that in front of you, you have a Christmas cracker. What I'd like you to do is to pull the crackers now, and then I'm going to ask you to tell us what you have in them in the way of a gift, oh. and also to sing the motto that you find inside. Pull the crack. I've got a bit of you listening at home, I'd like to put your ah! fingers in. Oh, oh. 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 made in Belfast. Oh, oh. nothing in there. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a dead bird in mine. <laughs> mine says keep okay, away well, from children. Okay, we'll start then. A dead bird and uh, your motto, yes. will you please sing? Colin, give him a joke. It's more of a riddle. What is the difference between photography and influenza? Answer, one mix facsimiles, the other sick families. Oh. And now for the hard of hearing. Yes, you can have a mark for that, uh, Willie. We'll go over that. now to uh, Graham. Why is a pig's tail like a carving knife? I don't know. Why is a pig's tail <laughs> like a carving knife? Because it's waved over ham. <laughs> Victorian conundrum. <laughs> Graham, we never heard what uh, gift you got in yours. I got a pirate's eye patch. I was hoping for a parrot. <laughs> oh, never mind. Too bad. Tim Brooke Taylor. I seem to have a bracelet made of Esther Ranson's teeth. <laughs> Cupid's arrows strike the dart Deeply through my faithful heart Evermore my love thou art What a boring cracker this one was! <laughs> Tim is now showing it to the audience. That's certainly it? the best motto so far. Now, Barry. It's a small plastic urn. It's like something for providing specimens from midgets. I don't know what. <laughs> I, I tried to blow it, Tom, but there we are. <coughs> Why do old maids wear muffs? Why do old, old maids, maids wear, wear muffs? muffs? What a good question you're asking me. Why do old maids wear muffs? To which I reply, to keep off the chaps. <laughs> OK, well, Tim Brooke Taylor is the only, uh, the, the one who won that round, because he's the only one who'd left his funny hat on. <laughs> and we go on to the first uh, proper round now to round off the programme. And this is one that's called Christmas Stockings. Our two teams uh, are overcome with the festive spirit, and for reasons that are too complicated to go into, they're going to stuff a Christmas stocking with presents beginning with a letter that I shall give them. The other team can challenge if they think that any of the presents will have difficulty getting into a stocking. The first team will then provide some suitably far-fetched and amusing explanation as to how they intend to cram them in. <laughs> have you got that? OK, well, we're going to start now with you, Tim and Willie, and your letter is P. Potato. 
in the stocking. Parkinson. <laughs> Stuffed. Just wishful thinking. Uh, <laughs> porridge. Oh, no. uh, Pyramid. <laughs> Challenge there from Barry Crowley. Uh, rather late. I was going to challenge Parkinson on the grounds of it's not an inanimate object, and then I had second thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Hum. Too late, yes. Yeah. Carry on, Tim. Uh, plate. Uh, photographic counter at Boots. <laughs> what? A challenge from Barry Cry again. No. Or was it from... Or, as I'm sometimes known, Graham Garden. That's right. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, did Tim say plate? <laughs> Yes. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Porcupine. Parisian model, second floor. <laughs> Parisian model, third floor. Oh, blast, there was a fourth floor, but it fell off. <laughs> um, <laughs> poetic license. <laughs> Peruvian ambassador. Certainly. <laughs> Welcome, sir. A challenge what? from Barry Cryer. Name him. <laughs> Juan Imorales Los. Paraguayos. You're cold? I retire. <laughs> I retire abashed. Prunes for later. <laughs> this is a long running serial. Parachute for Parisian model fourth floor. <laughs> After the uh, morning, <laughs> um, Plank. Prostate. <laughs> Priest. <laughs> Phonograph. Portly. Port. Portly. Port. 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 Challenge from Port. Barry Cry. An adjective. Yes. What? An adjective. You're right, Barry. Thank and you. And you take Humphrey. over the, uh, the the filling of the stocking now for your team. And, and your letter is F. F. A fairy for the top of the Christmas tree. Second floor. <laughs> Challenge Name him. him. <laughs> <laughs> well, go on. No, he's currently the Peruvian ambassador. I wouldn't like to... <laughs> Name him. <laughs> <laughs> Willie just did, and I, uh, I couldn't follow that. <laughs> follow him. <laughs> Tim, you did very badly on your round, but you've made it up with challenges <laughs> so far. Uh, you've got uh, three seconds left, Barry. <laughs> I'm empathetic. Um, Farthingale. I don't know the metric equivalent of that. Yes, right. Now then, we go on oh. to uh, the point... <laughs> This is the point uh, where I ask the teams to sharpen their pencils and their wits and start thinking of late arrivals at the Christmas ball, which I'll ask them to give the end of the programme. Late arrivals teams at the Christmas ball. Now we have the round called Double Feature, and this round, as you all know, takes as its premise the poverty of the international film industry. For economic reasons, new films will have to be remakes of pairs of old films. I want you to hear the resulting titles, and I will award points for anything approaching humour. <laughs> Right. However gingerly. We'll start, as points are very scarce, with Barry Cryer. Um, <laughs> Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and the Elephant Man will become a new picture called Any Which Way You Can. <laughs> <laughs> Carnal Knowledge and the Man with Bogey's Face, a new film called Carnal Bogey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you oh. for that applause. Tim Brooke Taylor. Uh, uh, the, the makers of, of Dallas... Um, Last Ditch Stand and Ring of Bright Water are going to produce a film that's Dallas Ditch Water. Last <laughs> <laughs> Ditch Stand. Last <laughs> Ditch Stand. <laughs> Terrific. My brilliant career uh, combined with Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf and the Boyfriend, which is called My Who's a Big Boy Then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Graham, Graham Garden. They're going to combine Breaking Glass and Gone with the Wind and get some very funny looks on the bus. <laughs> Okay, Willie Rushton. Well, so pathetic is the film industry, I've got the elephant man combined with the pink panther, and it's the spirit of Christmas pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Theatrically, they're actually combining the last of Mrs. Cheney and the mouse trap, which is going to be the last of the mouse traps, or thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> Filmically, which begins with F, and they might have mentioned previously, mm -hmm. Hawk the Slayer, The Ring Cycle, and Days of Wine and Roses is appearing as no hawkers, circulars, or butlers. <laughs> Uh, Tim and Willie are way ahead at the moment. Uh, Barry, would you like to come back and try and catch well, up? Well, my mind dwelt on Kurosawa's new epic, uh, Kagi Musha, which is combined <laughs> with the Jack Nicholson film Five Easy Pieces for a new film called Mushy Pea. <laughs> <laughs> but then, 
I moved on. <laughs> but that's a gonna... seasonal offering. They're, they're uh, combining some like it hot, mean streets, and the spy who came in from the cold to make a hot, mean spy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, slightly subtle one here. Um, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Nicholas Nickleby and Blazing Saddles to produce burnt bums. <laughs> Would you like a pause for that to sink in? Lone Anybody... Star Above Us the Waves and Invasion of Giant Squid, a new film called Lone as a Quid. <laughs> now then, we have. Good anticlimax. Good anticlimax. We have a round now called Sing Along. In this round, each panellist has to sing along with a disc. Once the tune and tempo have been established, the sound of the disc will disappear and the panellist will be left on his own. After an embarrassing pause, the disc comes back and the panellist scores points if he's still with it. All these songs come from the record Sing Along a Maximus and are sung by Max oh. Bygraves. Oh, pass the paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> and the necessary bucket. <laughs> Incidentally, I'm going to mark this one on the length of your applause. So, uh, Graham Garden, yours, your song <clears throat> is Winter Wonderland. Yes. Sleigh bells ring Are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening A beautiful sight, we're happy tonight Walking in a winter wonderland Gone away, here's the bluebird Here to stay, here's a new bird He sings a love song as we go along Walking in the winter And I make that four marks to Graham Garden. <laughs> Willie Rushton, your song is Old Lang Syne. Should old acquaintance be forgotten? In your case, Max, certainly. Never brought to mind. Should old acquaintance be forgotten? For the sake. Okay, Willie, one mark for you now. And, <laughs> and unfortunately, Willie Rushton, you came in last, so you I win. Know. No, Max came last. I was going to say <laughs> that you win the, the Max Bygraves record. <laughs> so we go on with the next game now, which is the game called Good News, Bad News. Someone whom I'm about to nominate will start with some good news, and the next person will give us the corresponding bad news, and then the next person will give us the good news, and then it'll go back to the other person who'll give us the bad news, over to the second person who came in who will give us the good news, back, and so on. Except February, until which is 29. I press the buzzer. <laughs> until I press the buzzer. Now, Graham. Yes. Will you start off with the good news, please? Right. The good news is Ronald Reagan is making another film. <laughs> good, good news. Uh, the bad news, it's Apocalypse Now. <laughs> as opposed to the film of Mick Jagger's life, which is Puckalypse now. <laughs> um, where are we? Good news. The good it's news a musical. Thing. Bad news, so was that with a lovely war. <laughs> the good news, Reagan's only got a small part. <laughs> Bad news is the next line's been cut. <laughs> Yes, by me it has to. Now then. <laughs> okay, Tim, you're going to start with some good news. Um, Go ahead. 
Good news, please you, Hump. Um, we're all getting a Christmas bonus. Uh, bad news, so are all the other pensioners. <laughs> Further good news, we're all getting a little something extra in our stockings. Bad news, varicose veins. <laughs> yes, hold on, Graham. Several years' medical training went into Oh, yes. <laughs> Willie Rushton, do you want to start with some good news? Uh, good news, Prince Charles is engaged. The bad news is the train is still standing in the station. <laughs> Good news is that's what I call a royal flush. <laughs> Bad news is um, uh, I haven't got a funny line. <laughs> the good news is British Rail have got hundreds of them. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Now, Willie, you didn't play a very prominent part in the Thank last you. round, so you can start. You can start this one. With uh, some good news, please. Good news! The Romans are back in Britain. Yeah. <laughs> Bad news, I'm a druid. <laughs> good news, I'm a druid too. <laughs> Bad news, I'm Mary Whitehouse. <laughs> good news, the Romans aren't fussy. <laughs> Very good by both teams there. We're going to go on now with the game called Simon Says. I'm going to tell the teams to do various things, and they have to do them. Marks will be awarded according to how well they do them and deducted for falling over or getting stuck. I'd like those of you in the studio or listening on your car radios or at home to join in with this game. And let me remind you that if I don't say Simon Says, teams, you must not do what I tell you to do. Otherwise, you will be disqualified. Simon Says, stand up. Huh. <coughs> Simon says, raise the right leg. Oh. Simon says, raise the left leg. <laughs> oh. I I'm can't keep this up for long. <laughs> oh, <I heard. laughs> OK, get down on all fours. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Tim Brooke Taylor has been disqualified and I must, I must tell you that if you get disqualified more than six times you have to leave the game <laughs> uh, Simon says get down on all fours should, should, should we not Humphrey at this stage issue a warning to drivers on the M4 not to play along <laughs> uh, with this, uh, or uh, those who are already crouching Simon uh -huh. says waggle your bottom in there. I'd hate to be on the M4 now. <laughs> uh, Simon says, jump up in the air. Ah. I wish the other two had come down. <laughs> Touch your right ear. Oh. Oh. Bar Barry's disqualified. Simon says, put your fingers in your ears. Simon says, now take them out. <laughs> Simon says, now take them out. I shall now signal to the teams to take their fingers out of their ears so that we can go on with the next game. After what can only be described as an ovation from the audience. <laughs> Right, now we have a, a, a subtle game, as you can tell from its title. It's called Predictions for 1981. I'm going to ask the teams for their predictions about some of the things that are going to happen in 1981. So are you ready, teams? All right, we'll start with you, Graham Garden. At the Old Vic, Peter O'Toole and Timothy West will co-star in a production of The Odd Couple. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, how about you? Um, Michael Foote's credibility will be devalued and become ten inches. Stick <laughs> <laughs> during the winter. <laughs> Barry Humphreys will change sex as we know it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Barry, would you like to 
Volunteer I jotted down a few thoughts. Britt Eklund will write a book about how she'd never met the Shah of Persia. <laughs> and Tony Blackburn will turn professional. <laughs> Willie, how about you? Uh, all the remaining friends and acquaintances of Harold Wilson will be rounded up by Interpol and MI5. <laughs> Prince Charles will marry the Supremes, but not necessarily in that order. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Thatcher will invade Poland if no one else will. I think there's a lot of loose talk there about Prince Charles. Yes, uh, in 1981, I think press speculation about his romantic life will end when the palace announces that he's broken it off. <laughs> By the law of averages, through a mix-up, Tommy Doherty and Malcolm Allison will be managing the same club at one moment. <laughs> Humphrey Littleton will be knighted not before time. Well, I should get a lot of points for that. <laughs> Do you wish to try and catch Tim up? <laughs> I think I'd rather die first. <laughs> no, I think that's a... Uh, I mean, always uh, end on a high note, so I think we'll end the round there. <laughs> and we've gone to a round now, which is intriguingly called Backwards. And this... For, <laughs> for lack of that. For lack of a better description, I must tell you, this is a music round. Just before the programme, both teams have secretly r recorded a song, one song each. And we're now going to play it backwards, and their opponents have to guess what the song is. And you can join in in the audience. Anybody in the audience who gets the answer right will, of course, go straight to the top of the um, marks list. And we're going to start with you now, Graham Garden. Uh -huh. This is your song. Ich sit da vorne und sag, wer ist heute gelegen? Nein, den gibt's genau da auch. Ich merk mir den Nacht. Hier geht mal den Nacht. Hier geht mal den Nacht. Hier geht's nach da. Das mach ich nach. Das ist ein Swedish National Anthem. Yes. <laughs> Three people standing well, up at the back. Good uh, evening, nice to see you here. <laughs> Well, Humph, I'm Jim not Willie, can you guess that Chris one? Chris Eklund, an extremist, I think. <laughs> in the old arm. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll play it the right way round, and so they can tell... See if we can guess that. And if it is Graham. There's a tiny house by a tiny stream Where a lovely lad had a lovely dream And the dream came true quite unexpectedly In Gilly Gilly, also for cats and elbow by the sea one, No, no one, I don't know that. Two, no. Swedish well, now, Tim and Willie, that gives you a hint. <coughs> you still don't know. No. Right, no. we go on now. No. <laughs> Willie. Any old on or... Any old... No. No, no Willie, we'll, uh, we'll hear your song now. <laughs> right. Graham or Barry, any ideas? It sounded like any old iron after you'd been mentioning it compulsively. It's one of those jolly one rollicking those cockney songs. What it? a mouth. Or... Anybody in, Is it in the a audience? Song? Nah. What? Not the nuns chorus, no. Run no. Rabbit. <laughs> Run Rabbit, the gentleman Not said. Rabbit. Run nah. Rabbit, no, I'm sorry. No. Let's hear he played right. One, two, three, and up, four, and up, rock. Five, six, seven, eight, and up, rock. Nine, ten, eleven, and up, twelve, and up, rock. We're going to rock around the clock tonight. Oh! <laughs> Okay. Right, let's hear Barry Cryer's song now. Sounded uncannily like. I Max needed forceps, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Sounded uncannily like Max Bygrave singing Old Lang Syne, did you know? <laughs> it was, um, something of Jolson's, was it? No, no, no. The first line ended in. Pff. <laughs> yes, so if you now reverse then, that. Is that a clue? Yeah, it's a clue, yes. It was preceded by the indefinite article. <laughs> Think of for rank Sinatra. 
Uh, Not when you listen to a that. A funny I mean... valentine. Let's try the audience now. Anybody got any ideas <laughs> about this round? You're... <laughs> I think that was back then. <laughs> Can we have that suggestion the right way round? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? No? You were never lovely. That's nothing to do with it, Mother. Thank you. <laughs> I buy your taste. But, uh, I think you should be knighted too. <laughs> okay. So let's hear that one the right way round. Put us all out of our misery. Not me. A foggy day <laughs> in London town Had me low, had me down And suddenly I saw you there And in foggy London town The sun was shining Ladies and gentlemen, Barry Crow, a great start. I once thought Star was spelled S T A R. Do you remember when comedy shows always used to have a, a celebrated singer in the middle of them to break the thing up? No, before my time. I was it? No. <laughs> I remember when they used to have jokes. <laughs> <laughs> We've Tim. changed all that. We're going to hear Tim's song now. <laughs> Nurse, the screams. <laughs> Okay, now, Graham. Easy, ding-dong merrily on high. <laughs> <laughs> now, we have to you see... You don't know how right. far off you a... are. Just listen. Ding-dong merrily on high. 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 Yes. <laughs> that silicone is wonderful stuff, you know. <laughs> what gave it away okay, was that well, long, tortured Gloria at the end. Oh, she's left. <laughs> <laughs> that was an extraordinary win by uh, Graham Garden there. And we're now going to go on for the game that all of you have been playing since we were last on the air. And it's, of course, Mornington Crescent. And uh, teams, we're going to, as this is the Christmas, the festive occasion, we're going to play with the open rules. Let me just remind you then oh. that diagonals, parallel transfer and horizontal exchange are all permitted. Junctions automatically throw the ploy into reverse and yellow, green and blue can be brought into operation above and below the line. <laughs> right? <laughs> yellow, green and, and blue. And blue. You can't have green with open rules, I'm sorry. To be a bit pernickety. You can you can't Christmas. Have has been done, has been done. You can. Not here, I'm sorry. I'm afraid my uh, judgment so on this is, is absolutely I'm sorry, I'm unreversible, sorry. so uh, right. that's another me. rule. Well, I, know, I, should have I mean, you've had to play it properly, not at all. You know. <laughs> Come back, Barry. All Sit right, down. all right, I'll play it. I'll right. And you can start. Oh, thank you. Euston Road. Greek Street. Uh, being Christmas, uh, North Pole Road. <laughs> Green Park. Bishop Gate. Uh -huh. <laughs> the hell with you. Paradise Row. Ha! Ha! You can't do it now, though. Yeah, but you can't do it. Oh. We'll have to miss one. You Cold Harbour Lane. Mornington Square. <laughs> oh. Piccadilly. Piccadilly. Thank you. Oh, clever clock. Yes. New Bond Street. Old Bond Street. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've said Green Park, haven't I? Too? Yes, and very nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Albemarle Street. Mornington Crescent. Yes. Mm. Oh. <laughs> yes. 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 Thank you. you walk right into it. Oh. Yes. Oh, dear. Oh, Got a bit rusty. rusty. Mm. Well played, Barry Cryer there. I must admit that I didn't see that coming. It did. We'll get on to the round, which is uh, the round called Misleading Advice. 
I'm going to ask the teams to do their good deed for the day and give me some misleading advice for Christmas. Misleading advice for Christmas, starting with you, Willie Rushton. It's at a party. Why don't you go over there and have a really lively conversation with John Biffin? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you join in the Lumberjacks tree felling contest in Trafalgar Square? <laughs> <laughs> a spatter of applause puts you in the lead. Now then, uh, Tim Brooks, what about in. yours? Do take advantage of British Rail's free travel on Christmas Day. <laughs> and you're catching up with that one. My mind drifted back to... Um, when we did misleading advice for to tourists, I think they should be helped. I think they should be told that if one of our policemen proffers them a breathalyzer, they should oblige him with a specimen as quickly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> then, I actually, this is a very useful thing. To ensure the best possible flavor, frozen turkey should not be defrosted until the last possible minute. Um, never more than ten minutes before cooking. <laughs> <laughs> or always allow one turkey per person. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, there's no need to buy batteries. There's always a battery with every toy that needs a battery. <laughs> and if not, there's bound to be a shop open you can get a battery from, so on Christmas Day. So just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> oh, for value for money at Christmas for any foreigners here, the, the best possible um, way to get British craftsmanship at its best with examples of British wit, wit you can do no better than buy a box of crackers. <laughs> An English carol singers love our traditional cry of sod off snotty brats. <laughs> OK, OK, yes. We have a round now which I think uh, Tim Brooke Taylor has already begun. It's called Singing Sprint. In this round, one team sings a song as fast as they can, and then the opposing team must beat their time. I have a stopwatch here, and uh, the winners will get a mark. <laughs> Uh, the song is that classic uh, up till this moment, Do Re Mi from The Sound of Music, and uh, with a stopwatch at the ready. Let's start with Tim and Willie. You've got to sing this as quick as you can. Faster. Do a deer, a female deer, ray, a drop of golden sun. Me, a name I call myself, far a long way to run. So, so a needle pulling thread, la, and a little hollow, tea, and a little thread, and that bring us back to do, 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 Well, that was extraordinary enough, 17 seconds, uh, which is uh, uh, quite obviously wrong somewhere along the line. I think uh, that that was too much of a it duet. The so, kiss of life Graham and Barry, we're going to slightly alter things now to even things up and make it much more fair. I'd like you to sing alternate words. Ah. Starting ah. now. Do a deer, a female deer, ray a drop of golden sun. Me a name I call myself Far a long, long way to run So a needle pulling thread La a note on high or low Tea a drink with jam and bread And will bring us back to Do Do Re Mi Fa So La Ti Do <laughs> No need to go into details, but Graham and Barry won that round, and we go on to it's the ad lib poem now. I'm going to give someone the first line of a poem, and they continue until I buzz, like that, and the next person continues. And to keep us in Christmas mood, I'm going to give you a line from A Christmas Carol. And the line is God bless you all, said Tiny Tim. God bless you, everyone. God bless us, everyone, as I remember from my well thumbed uh, copy of the aforementioned yes. tome. Are you, are you challenging? <laughs> no, um, no, your well, basilisk starting. there. <laughs> st Barry Cryer is starting. Oh, Lord. We're having a lovely Christmas. It really is such fun. I've eaten quite a lot today. I've eaten far too much. Meanwhile at home, old Scrooge was doing impersonations of facts. <laughs> <laughs> topical, topical. <laughs> He sang black magic several times and kicked a passing cat. <laughs> and then he kicked Bob Cratchit and thought, well, that's that. <laughs> but Cratchit, in rebellious mood, turned upon E. Scrooge. 
a good rhyme. He was a oh, dreadful yeah. miser, uh, <laughs> but cheeks were painted rouge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God bless you all, said Tiny Tim. God bless us, everyone. Uh, he said the line again, I think. To reassure his mum. <laughs> to reassure his mum. How oh, funny, I took the words right out of my mouth. God bless you, said his sweet old mum. God bless you all today. <laughs> then suddenly a rattling of chains. Oh, filled we are with dismay. <laughs> we being Ebenezer Scrooge, who laid <laughs> a bed that morn and saw old Marley's ghost loom up with a visage all forlorn. <laughs> Ebenezer, said Jacob, you are a naughty man. This... Oh. <laughs> um, yes, I will sit down with you and consume some apple flan. <laughs> a thing you never gave to me when I worked at the bench. The best I had for Christmas wasn't turkey, but gudgeon or tench. <laughs> but Scrooge exclaimed, who are these ghosts with you that cry like shipwrecked sailors? <laughs> Replied the spectre, you must have heard of Marley and the whalers. <laughs> Well, uh, Graham Garden wins that one. We, I'm going to give you another. That's try and make right. this one as short as possible, teams. I'm going to start with you, Willie Rushton, to yes. complete this line. Are you ready? Yes. The slap of naked flesh proclaimed an orgy in the lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> what is Ian Paisley doing on top of poor old Mrs. Whitehouse? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 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 okay, that was a good one. That's yes. quite brilliant. <laughs> Proud to be on my team. <laughs> now, here's a, here's a round that's called Christmas Gifts for Particular People. Appropriate presents for people of your choice. And they don't have to be all that particular. Now then, Graham Garden. This Christmas, no child's nursery should be without a J.R. doll. You wind it up and it double-crosses Noddy. <laughs> To Jacqueline Bissett, I would like to give myself <laughs> several times. Um, the England cricket team, two West Indian fast bowlers. <laughs> Barbara Woodhouse, a bone. <laughs> Reverend Ian Paisley, a volume control. <laughs> Twelve marks for effort. <laughs> Very cry. Prompted by that remark. I think Ian Paisley's a ripe field for Christmas presents. An orange jock strap. <laughs> uh, <laughs> box of Catholic cornflakes. <laughs> those are the ones that go snap, crackle and poop. <laughs> Some tablets for loss of voice to make sure he gets it. <laughs> and a clerical collar size very small. <laughs> OK, Willie. Willie Rushton. Well, I, I can now rub Mr. Kasigin off my list. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 uh, an organic Sir Michael Foot. <laughs> I'd like to give Jimmy Savile a bushel to hide his light under. I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> kind thought at this, at this time of year. I was going to give Sir Michael Edwards a cowboy outfit, but he's already got one. Anymore? Sometimes quite this funny. This is the point in the program where, where I sit back and relax so that I can uh, listen to all these lovely announcements for the arrivals at the Christmas ball. Anybody <laughs> start who wishes? <laughs> God knows I'd help you, but the Sharabang hasn't turned up yet. <laughs> I'm containing my own long list of guests. <laughs> but when they do arrive, I'll certainly join in. Will oh. you welcome? Take two. No, Will take three, welcome? they're only small. <laughs> take four. Will you go... Oh. <laughs> Tim's going to start. <laughs> Please will you welcome. Mr and Mrs not been given another Guinness Book of Records. And their <laughs> hermaphrodite child. Surely I've not been given another Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> I'll stop 
while you're behind. <laughs> the Sharabang still hasn't turned up, otherwise I could improve this whole... <laughs> oh, there's that old taxidermist George Paxo. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. A Manger and their son Wayne Manger. <laughs> all the way from Dockland, the lovely Miss Gover, known to us all affectionately as Whopping and Gover. <laughs> Will you welcome from Italy, please? And remember, they are foreigners in our country, so be kind to them. Signor and Signora Drink and Drive and their daughter Donna, you drink and drive. <laughs> Over there, Mr. and Mrs. Dunyan Stuffing. And their very <laughs> wise, their very wise daughter, Sage Anne Dunyan Stuffing. <laughs> and now it's Willie's turn. No, I, I mean, <laughs> a phone the call is coming away. from the driver of the Sharabang who says he's being breathalyzed in a lay-by near Bletchley. <laughs> Good heavens, all the way from Spain, some other visitors. Let's welcome them as well. Senor and Signora, shopping day to Christmas with their son, who we rarely see, and we cry, bloody hell, it's only one shopping day to Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. High and their happy bell ringing son, Ding Dong Merry Leon High. <laughs> and Mr. and Mrs. Woods and their babe, Cindy Woods. <laughs> Didn't no. I hear the sound of a charabang pulling up outside? Yes, you no. did. <laughs> not a word, not a word. Ah, welcome Willie's party. Well, they've let a lad in. Yes. <laughs> it's a funny way to hand in your notice, this, Fred, isn't it? <laughs> if you're For the benefit of the audience, I should say that things are absolutely level pegging at the moment. Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Damnation, not turkey sandwiches again. And their daughter, <laughs> Helen Damnation, not turkey sandwiches again. <laughs> Oh, somebody's just found Elsie Tanner in the pudding. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, all good things have to come to an end. And this program oh, also Jewish. has to come to an end now, so all I have to do is to tell you the score, which is that Graham and Barry have won tonight's star prize, which is a holiday for three in Rickmansworth, plus... <laughs> plus the latest sing-along a Leonid Brezhnev LP, but... Uh, <laughs> Jim and Willie, you, you've been wonderful contestants and we're very sorry to lose you, but you don't go home single-handed. You have a Dennis Roussos whoopee cushion, <laughs> a make a Willie Whitelaw out of a potato kit, <laughs> and some Harvey Smith nutcrackers. <laughs> and from all of us this year, goodbye. Barry Cryer, Graham Garden, Tim Brooke Taylor and Willie Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by Geoffrey Perkins.